Hello everybody. This is, um, whoops, hold on. There we go. <laughs> Put the tripod on top of my brown um, board there. So this is the, se the fourth session in my intro to mixed media class. Um, last night at the end I was showing you how I use deli paper, um, these 12 inch by 12 inch sheets of um, dry wax paper is what it's also called, um, to make my own collage materials and use up extra paint. So this is, um, has now dried of course. So here's where I stamped with the, the key stamp and you can see that it kind of um, developed a little bit more clarity as it dried, but it's still kind of a nice subtle image. So here's the one that I did where I just took my brayer and brayered some paint and kept going in, in different directions. So it has kind of a nice texture to it. So I'm putting it on the brown um, paper because I think you can see a little bit better what it looks like. And then this is, whoops, have another page stuck to it. Um, yep, this is the right side, I think. Um, this is the one with the, the stamp with a lot of detail that once I had thinned down the paint, um, I was able to achieve the nice detail of the stamp. So, obviously, with a darker color, it would be more distinct. But, anyway, so that's those. Um, so, tonight, we're going to work with collaging on our pieces. So, I have a small selection here of collage materials that I've acquired over the years. Um, I like to use um, books or Bibles in foreign languages. Well, Languages that are foreign to me, at any rate. So partly, I really like the texture. So um, so I have them. Here's a piece I've already torn. So And then I also really enjoy maps. So this is a, a book of maps of the UK. Um, I think they're topographical maps or something. So, But anyway, so I'll be using um, some of these. Since these pieces aren't very large, I don't need a great deal, but what I do is I tear the edges of my paper, um, and with these, I sometimes I, I like the, the map edge, so um, I'm going to leave some of that, so I'm going to just tear these in, in pieces, we'll have, um, I tear the edges instead of leaving the hard edge because it kind of blends into the um, into the background of, of your piece. It kind of uh, marries to it better when it's torn than when you have a sharp edge. Now towards the end of my piece, if um, I have used the cut edges, so but because um, texture really is a lot more dominant than most other features of your work, um, then it can be very distracting if it's not done um, the way that you want it to, and done intentionally, that sort of thing. So, so this is what I do. I just keep tearing up and preparing. Um, since I've kind of been doing the same thing on both of these, I'm going to stick to um, doing a similar type of thing with using these. So... Um, and then one more. So keep tearing off the edges. So I try and keep a trash handy so I don't make a huge mess. Okay, so I've got my collage materials set. I'm going to just have one set with that board and then one set with this board set those just um, to the side for now. So I like these little um, salsa cups or, or whatever that you can get, like if you get takeout, salsa comes in or sauces, dressing, that sort of thing. So, and again, we're using the matte medium. So this is the same stuff that I used when I primed the um, watercolor paper. So, but I wanted to show you this time how I mix it together. So, so I pour some of the medium in there, and then um, I 
I'm just going to use water out of my squirt bottle tonight. So I add about 50-50 water. So I'm wanting the consistency to be um, kind of like half and half, light cream, somewhere in there. So, so I just stir the, that up with a brush. And what I like about these little containers is um, they're cheap and free if you... I purchased a bunch of them because um, I did live classes and so I wanted to div divvy up stuff at that point. Um, but they do have lids that seal quite well so you can mix up one of these. Um, and this, this is one that I mixed up quite a while ago. I've added to it. Um, the lid is wanting to stick. Um, so. I probably did not was careless and not cleaning off those things very well so that's this is my glue and um, the medium is the binder of the paints paints are binder plus pigment the pigment determines the color um, so the binder is the same stuff and by same it's acrylic um, you definitely don't have to stick with all Liquitex brand things or all golden or whatever so um, and then sometimes I kind of keep in mind a composition if I want kind of an angle or if I want a cruciform. Um, I try and not do anything directly across the middle. That's um, not very pleasing to the eye. So if you're going to do a straight line, you're going to want to do something at the thirds. So there's the, the rule of thirds in photography that also works quite well here. So this is a page out of a Bible, so it's very thin. Um, so all I need to do for the thin pieces is put down a layer of my medium and then um, paint more medium on top. So and you can see that it kind of gets transparent. Let's see. Okay. I want to kind of go in an order of thickness for you. And you can see how the, the pencil marks kind of smear in a nice way where they still were not glued down by the paint. So for um, this is, I'm not sure um, what this is out of, but it, it, it's more of a copy weight paper in um, weight. So to do for that, I'm going to paint the back. So, and I just do it on my board. I paint my surface. I put the piece down and then I go back over it with the medium. So same thing here. I'm going to paint the back. I'm going to make sure I've got plenty. And you just want a good coating. You don't want it puddling or, or anything like that necessarily. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to do that. So, and I'm not, again, I don't know what this piece wants to be when it grows up, so I'm just kind of doing things somewhat haphazardly and randomly. Now this piece is a little bit heavier, um, so I might do both sides. You can also soak um, heavier papers in water. Um, what you're doing is you're allowing the paper to absorb the moisture so that it expands um, and then is able to adhere well to your surface so you're not um, kind of starving that bond by having too little glue or too little moisture. So then I'm going to put that down there. I'm going to make sure I don't have any puddles. So the next strip, and you want to have baby wipes handy. Um, so although if, you know, as a kid you liked putting glue on your hands and letting it dry and peeling off, this definitely works in a similar way. So to help the, the papers adhere very well to the surface, um, and I did do that, so I'm going to cover this with um, a paper towel and I'm going to take my brayer and I'm just going to go over the whole thing. I'm going to do it quickly. I'm not going to take a lot of time because obviously I don't want to stick the paper towel to my painting, um, but then you can kind of see um, possibly that it's not very shiny anymore. The excess glue has been absorbed, so number one, that's going to dry faster, and number two, you've squashed down um, and made sure that there weren't any unintentional pockets of air that weren't adhered. So, same thing again here. 
I just set these aside. And sometimes if I want to, I'll set them all out and make sure I like the way they look before beginning. Um, most of the time, I don't worry that much about it. I just kind of let intuition run. So, so again, with the lighter papers, I'm just putting a coat of paint and our paint the medium um, so with the little heavier papers putting a layer on the back and on my um, painting and then on the front to smooth it out so same thing here on the back Ooh, got quite a puddle there um, and then here so this one I'm gonna paint my glue on both sides let it absorb so I do that a couple of times it seems to want to um, and part of it is there is a difference in how much um, the surface absorbs between the paper and the board until you get quite a few layers of, of paint on there so then I'm gonna adhere that down making sure I don't have any mass puddles or anything like that putting my brush back in the water so it doesn't dry out because your brush will be toast and I'm brayering these down again um, so that they're well adhered onto my painting looks like I missed a little bit of a spot right there so so anyway that's how you do collage um, with papers so if you're doing anything much heavier than um, like up to a cardstock then you uh, might want to use just straight matte medium and soak the paper in water first um, it doesn't have to be completely soggy just softened um, so you can tell that it's not as stiff as it was before um, those fibers have relaxed um, if you have things that are a lot thicker than that I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it at this particular time um, but just so you know there we go it's hiding behind my picture paper towels you can use gel medium which is um, oh no that was a new one so I'll have it that's more of a paste um, glue so usually when I if I adhere like keys or p bits of metal um, bits of clay other found objects on as embellishments later on um, at the finish of the piece then that's when I use the gel medium um, so Anyways, I hope you hope that makes sense to all of you and that you have good luck um, with that. So I will warn you that collage is rather addictive once you get started. So hope you all are having a great night. Um, and be sure and check out my website. I'm going to be uploading all of these to a page on my website, alicearlene.com. That's A-L-I-C-E-A-R-L-E-N-E.com. And... Um, so they'll all be in one place and easy to find right in order for you. So um, anyways, hope you're having a great night. Be blessed. Bye-bye.